Hello, my name is Gary Stanley. I'm from Manchester, New Hampshire, up here in New England. And I'm on right now to talk about the spirit of lack and how I overcame it through the Word of God, through the Lord's help, how He gave me victory, not only over my finances, but over every single area of my life. And I pray that this encourages somebody who's facing lack, who's in need, who's in want, or somebody who just simply needs a financial breakthrough. Anybody out there who's just sick and tired of being sick and tired, of being in debt, of being in need, and of being in want, or anything of that nature. Before I get started, I want to thank Sister Alicia and the Armed and Anointed Ministries for giving me the opportunity and the honor for coming on to their ministry, for coming on to their their podcast, their, their webcast, and allowing me to give my testimony, to give a word tonight. And I pray once again that this is an encouragement for anybody out there who is watching. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this opportunity once again to be used by you. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that only you and you alone can supply every single one of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Father God, I ask that tonight that you allow me to decrease so that you may increase, Father God. Lord, put me away. Put me behind the cross tonight, Father God, and let your glory, let your goodness, Father God, let your faithfulness be revealed through this word, through this testimony, Father, as we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. To introduce what I have to say uh, about overcoming the spirit of lack, I want to start off with a portion of scripture, as I always like to do before I get into a word, before I get into a uh, uh, testimony. I like to... Uh, hear from the Word of God. I like to hear um, a real experience from the Bible that that applies to my real world experience as well. And tonight we're going to read from the book of Judges chapter 6 and we're going to start off in verse 1. And this is Gideon's call to service. I'm not going to get into uh, Gideon's story. This is just a piece of scripture that's going to introduce my story, my testimony in how I overcame the spirit of lack. Judges chapter 6, verse 1. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up. Also Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock in their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts, before they and their camels were without number. And they would enter the, enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. That's kind of like how my story goes. Everything that I tried to produce over uh, a long time, it seems like 10, 20, 30 years, Anything that I would try to make of myself, anything that I would tr do to try to get ahead in a provisional sense, meaning um, providing for my family f uh, housing, food, shelter, clothing, just the basic necessities in life, it seemed like making a living to me was an impossible task. I would work very, very hard, never a lazy person. I was never uh, raised to be a lazy person. Probably one of the hardest working people I know, but it seems like after days and months and years and at one point decades of beating my head into a wall, nothing ever would come about. So I cried out to the Lord one day and I asked the Lord, I said, 
you know, and I did it right here in this truck. I'm glad I'm doing this testimony tonight in this truck. This truck is my prayer closet. And this truck is where the Lord spoke to me about overcoming lack. And he told, pointed me to this chapter, Judges chapter 6. And he told me that there was a Midianite spirit oppressing me, taking everything away, even, not, even after not only just the things that I tried to produce, but even the things before I even started I was robbed of. So the Lord showed me this. He not only showed me the enemy of the Midianite, but he also showed me how to overcome it. He showed me through his word. He showed me how to fight against this Midianite spirit. He showed me how to wield my sword over this spirit of lack, over this spirit of need, over this spirit of destitution, um, over the spirit of, of just a true Midianite spirit because even whenever I would get money into my hand after a long day of hard work, I, it, it felt like the money was literally disintegrating and it was gone before I knew it. And then I was back out there again in my wine press, in my threshing floor, trying to make something out of nothing. But I thank the Lord for his word that through it, I overcame it. And God revealed to me that Midianite spirit. He told me to bind and rebuke it every single morning before I set out to work. Right when I got this truck, before I would turn the key, he would tell me, bind and rebuke the Midianite spirit in the name of Jesus. And I did that, and I did that faithfully every single day. Just like Gideon, when I cried out to the Lord, he answered, because the Lord's ear is not too heavy that it can't hear our cries for help. Um, the Lord wasn't too big or too busy to, to be mindful of me. Uh, you know, just like Gideon, me, little Gary Stanley, I, uh, my family is the least and I am the least of my family. Who is God that he's mindful of me? But I'm thankful that he is. I'm thankful that he cares not only about my finances, but of about all of my day-to-day -day needs. And when I cried out to the Lord, he told me what to do. And he also told me to, he encouraged me himself. He told me, Gary, I delivered you from the spirit of alcoholism. And I could also deliver you from the spirit of lack. And I'm so thankful that the Lord spoke to me in that way. He just dropped it in my heart. He dropped it into my spirit. And I knew that his promises are always yes and amen. I knew that he would come through for me. And he gave me the financial breakthrough that I needed. So he not only taught me um, about who the Midianite spirit was, but he also taught me how to overcome it. See, that's how good God is. He'll not only show you something, he'll show you how to overcome it. He'll show you how to overpower it. He'll show you how to, um, to, uh, to slay it right there in his tracks. He's not a halfway God. He's not gonna put you out there and leave you by yourself and say, this is it, that's him, go get him. No, he's gonna fight the battle for you. He's going to give you the victory so that he receives all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. And he'll use the least of the least, just like Gideon, just like myself. No matter who you are, the Lord will give you victory. But it took some things to gain this victory. It took not only hearing the word of God, but also doing the word of God. He taught me how to overcome this spirit by simply giving the complete opposite of what I, what I was trying to attain. I was trying to attain money for the livelihood of my family. Um, so what I would do is I would just hoard and hold everything that I had. And like I said earlier, the minute I would hold that money, it felt like, I was, it felt like it was disintegrating from my hand. But the Lord taught me, defeat the spirit of lack by simply giving. The Word of God says in Luke chapter 38, Give, 
and it will be given to you. Good measure, pre uh, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will it be put in your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You see, God taught me that I can't receive anything unless my hand is open. And the only way for my hand to be opened up is by giving. And when I give, then the Lord is then able to put in my hand the, my provision, my finances, to take care of my family. He's teaching me as each time I give and each time I hold my hand out, that as he's given to me, he's teaching me this one thing that he's my provider, that all good things come from him. The Word of God says in the book of James that all good things come from above. It comes from, down from the Father of lights. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above. It comes from the Father of lights, and it doesn't change like a shifting shadow. I know that when God says something, that his word never changes. He never goes back on his word. He never changes his mind. God is not a man that he should lie. Uh, God's promises are yes and amen. So as I was giving, and you can't outgive God because the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 11 that the, um, the generous will prosper and those who refreshes others will themselves be refreshed. So God taught me, Gary, I cannot give you anything if you're holding the money, if you're holding that finance so tight. It can't be, it, it, I, I, you can't receive unless your hand is open to give out so that I could give to you. And that was one way that the Lord has taught me that. The Lord also taught me in my tithing. He taught me through uh, the Malachi 3.10. He said, bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive it. God taught me to give 10% of my income every single week. Once again, giving. By giving 10% of my income every single week, not only has the Lord blessed the other 90%, as if it was 100% of it itself, but also he gave me more than enough. He gave me more than what I needed. Once I started doing that, the Lord blessed my business. He blessed my business beyond measure. In the last three years, my business has expanded because I've been following and obeying every single word that the Lord has told me to do just by simply giving. And um, giving in my tithing uh, was really the biggest thing that helped me with my business. It, it helped my business to grow, expand, and my cup literally is now running over. I have <laughs> more work than I know what to do with, but all glory goes to God because of that. But because of my tithing, because um, you see, if you're about the Lord's business, he's gonna be about your business. My tithing goes to the work of God, goes to the building of the kingdom of God. And through that, the Lord has blessed me beyond measure. And it also, another way that he's given me victory is from is by putting him first. As it says in Matthew 6.33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You see... By putting God first, not only has my finances improved, but every area of my life has improved. When I put God first, when I seek him first in his kingdom, in his righteousness, every single thing that I need day to day is given to me. I know that through the presence of God, by way of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, because Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. The only way that anybody could come into the Father is through him. And once you are into the presence of God, everything that you need is there. Everything that you need in life is in his presence. I don't have to 
go out chasing finances anymore. I don't have to go out chasing work anymore. I don't have to go out chasing money anymore because when I get into the presence of God, these things chase me. Everything I need is in his presence. It's already there. And that's another way I put by putting God first. God first, my family, then my business. And that's another way that the Lord has given me victory over the spirit of lack, over this Midianite spirit. And also in giving, the Lord has also taught me that it's not only just in money, but it's also in time and talent, as well as your treasure. To give of yourself to people, give of yourself to the work of the Lord. And the Lord will bless you through that. He's done the same thing to me. Another mini testimony I had is when I first got saved back about 10, 11 years ago. I started going into church. I started seeking the Lord because I know that when you seek those who seek the Lord, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. So one, I remember one week, it, well, I'm looking for work all week long, no phone calls coming in for work, knocking doors all, day, all week long, nothing come in. And then the Lord dropped in my spirit, go to your local church and start filling cracks. Now this church had an, an immense parking lot, numerous cracks, but the Lord told me take $25, go buy a block of crack filler and start filling the cracks. Okay, there's a need up there at the church. I'm gonna use your time, I'm gonna use your talent to help out my kingdom. So I listened to the Lord. And at the end of that block of rubber, when I was finished, a phone call came in with a job over the phone. And every single time that I would go up and give my time to this, par this church parking lot, Every single time I did that, a phone call would come in with either a job or an estimate to go look at a job where the Lord would bless me. So as you're about the Lord's business, he's going to be about your business. What concerns you concerns him. And that's what's going to help you. These things, giving, whether it's time, talent, treasure, giving of your tithes, giving of uh, your, your, uh, your time, giving of yourself simply giving and opening up your hand and letting go of what you have so that you could receive all of the goodness of God. That's my mini testimony on how the Lord has helped me there. But the most important thing that the Lord has taught me besides giving, it's obedience. If you want to be blessed by the Lord, it takes obedience. And I used to think obedience was a big, bad word that was confining and a, a word that held you back and you must obey and, and you must do this. What I've learned through the Lord, his definition of obedience to me, in my opinion, is, is just simply listening to him, just simply following him. Because when you follow the Lord, when you follow Jesus Christ, as it says in Psalm chap, uh, chapter 23, verse 1, when you follow the good shepherd who is Jesus Christ, he's going to usher you into the presence of God, and you shall not want for anything. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When you simply listen and follow, you will lack no good thing. And the Lord taught me this uh, about the importance of obedience and being blessed through uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I'm going to read a little bit of that scripture as well. Chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, 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 verse 1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body, the produce of the ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl 
Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you set your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord is giving to you. You see, the Lord has taught me that not only does he want to bless me financially, but he wants to bless me in every single area of my life. He wants to bless me in my home, my family, my marriage, my children, in my health. The Word of God says in uh, uh, 3 John chapter 1 that uh, I pray that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. The Lord not only wants to bless you tonight financially, but also physically, but above all spiritually. And that's what the Lord wants to do. He wants you to know that he's got every single area of your life covered, just like he did the same way. If you diligently seek the Lord, the book of Hebrews says that the Lord is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you study and when you delve into the word of God and when you obey him and when he tells you something, when you follow him, when you hear him, he will guide you through every single valley, every single mountain even a mountain of debt. In the book of Genesis, uh, when Abraham was given the sacrifice, it, 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 called, it, it was on the mountain called that the Lord will provide. Okay, Whether you're on a mountain of debt tonight, whether you're on a, a, a mountain of oppression tonight, on that mountain, the Lord will provide for you. And once again, I pray that this encourages somebody out there I pray that somebody takes hold of this word tonight, even if it's just one thing. I may have sounded like a babbling idiot, which most of the time I pretty much do. But if it's just one thing that you could hold on to, hold on to it tonight. Because the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus tonight, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the word, Lord. I thank you for the, the people who are watching this video tonight, Father God. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus tonight, I lift up everybody out there, Lord. And I ask in Jesus' name that you supply every single one of their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, I ask that you prosper them and for them to be in good health just as their souls prosper. Father God, I ask that they seek you first in all things so that everything they need could be added unto them. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus tonight that you restore everything that the locust has taken from anybody tonight, Lord. Father God, I ask that you lead them in a place where they shall not want. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you prosper each and every person out there to whatever they put their hands to, Lord. And Father God, I thank you that it's your blessings and your blessings alone that make us rich and that you add no sorrow to it. Father God, I also lift up Sister Alicia in her ministry, Father God, and I ask, Father God, that you prosper it, Father God, Lord. Prosper it above and beyond anything that she could ever ask or imagine, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the promise of your presence that where two or more are gathered, that Jesus Christ is in the midst of us. So I thank you, Lord, for your presence here tonight, Father. And Lord, may you and you alone, through tonight's word, through tonight's testimony, and through every soul out there watching, Father God, that you receive all the praise, honor, and glory that you so richly deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. So I encourage everybody tonight to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Good night and God bless.